Hey YouTube, welcome back. So I created a video about bootstrapping Tailwind and there was some great feedback from y'all on wanting to get more detail and see kind of more in general how these different frameworks behave. And today we're gonna go through some examples and code and we're gonna dig into exactly what the differences are and reiterate kind of what I talked about previously. So let's get started into it. All right, so we're here in VS Code and I have three examples today. We're gonna to go through a nav bar example, a cards example, and also a accordion example. So you can have, you know, like I mentioned in the previous video, kind of that collapsible FAQ section if you wanted. So this first one, we're gonna talk about the bootstrap, and this is doing a nav bar. So what this looks like, this guy right here. And so it's got the dark background, uh, nav bar, a little drop down right here, and then kind of you could do some kind of search where you search for something and then click out and it'll clear it for you. Search doesn't work. We'd have to implement all of that on the back end, but this gives you an example of kind of what this would look like in Bootstrap. Then if we come back over here to VS Code, we can see, you know, we're using the navbar class, which this is all built in to Bootstrap. Um, again, some of the nice things is you could prototype really quickly. And so you use these built-in classes to get some of that JavaScript for free and you don't have to write it all yourself. So we have, you know, the background set, we have the dark theme. Uh, this container fluid in Bootstrap is gonna let you do responsive stuff. So if we come back over here and we try to do a mobile view, you can see that all of that information collapses. We only see the logo, which would be our nav bar and we can expand and collapse. It's got a nice CSS animation. The drop down also works really nicely. Uh, again, like none of this actually goes to anywhere, but this is an example where you can enter in a bunch of information, clear it out, search it, whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, and you get a lot of this for free. So you use the nav bar. It's got the nav um, HTML element. In here, this is our toggler. So the button that you see, the little hamburger menu, um, that's gonna toggle. This navbar collapse is the thing that is gonna be responsive and allow us to have that little hamburger menu. The search form here, it doesn't really do anything, but if we wanted to have it perform some, uh, some submit and go to a backend, and we could do that. A lot of the nav dash items in here are the built-in pieces of Bootstrap. And then this collapse and nav bar collapse is gonna hook into some of that stuff. And drop down menu, as long as you have this prefix drop down and then dash menu and then drop down dash item, then you get those um, drop down pieces like here. So let's take a look at the Tailwind version. And so this looks very similar it's got similar components it's got a logo here on the left and then some hover and links that don't go anywhere uh, this is a variation on the search um, so it doesn't clear we don't have that for free we'd have to build that but it's got the cool icon here uh, we have you know if you were signed in maybe you'd have a little cool cat icon here uh, and you could go to your dashboard or other pages and that i will show you here in our Tailwind index.html. All of this code will be up on GitHub. I'll put a link down in the description and you can check it out yourself. Uh, all of these include the CDN link. So for Tailwind, it just pulls this in for Bootstrap. It pulls it in off of the CDN. So you don't have to download anything onto your computer. It'll download it into your browser and you can use it. For the Tailwind piece, uh, you can see we still use the nav HTML element and then we're doing flex. So we're doing some flex stuff and setting a lot more classes. You know, we didn't set a lot of classes here. We kind of set this theme, uh, whereas over here we have to get a little bit more into the weeds on setting your CSS components. What this gives us is, is flexibility like this, you know, every nav bar in bootstrap is gonna look and feel very similar to this. You know, if you if you wanted to do something more custom, you're kind of losing the benefits of what Bootstrap is giving you in that it lets you fast prototype and get something done. Here, this is more custom 
and it has a better customization component, but it is a little bit more work. These things where it is LG hidden, this is your flexibility. So whenever you have mobile version, then you click on that. You can see we have similar stuff. I don't know. If, I don't know if this actually makes sense to move this down, but hey, I got it working and uh, you can play around with it and make it way better than I could. Having those prefixed will let you do different breakpoints for different screen sizes. That's how you get that to work. You can see we're doing like a width full. Uh, we're doing a lot more flex stuff and making sure that things are hidden. So again, with the screen sizes, making sure those are behaving appropriately. What Tailwind does is if you set this, it starts from this point and goes above. So there's, like, I believe, one more above this. So this is like a large screen size. Uh, with a certain number of pixels and there's also an extra large anything that is large or extra large will have this applied to it you can see we have you know some other prefixes for uh, different screen sizes a little bit more code here as well as uh, some javascript so we don't get this behavior for free we have to implement it in in JavaScript. And so this does a query selector on the user menu button. Up here, this is uh, that little cat image. And whenever you click it, then it has this listener and it will toggle the drop down for us. Uh, same for the little hamburger menu. So this guy, this also has an event listener, which is down here. So we have to set all this up uh, and toggle the hidden class so that things will show and hide. And so we have to, again, we have to build our own CSS, or I'm sorry, we have to build our own JavaScript, but we get a lot more flexibility. So let's move on to the next example where we are doing an accordion. So this is Bootstrap. Uh, it has some nice highlighting for the current item that's selected. It has a nice CSS transition. And so you can see that, you know, it kind of flows this way. And if we, you can only have one expanded at a time. So the code for that looks like this, where you use, again, these built-in classes for Bootstrap. And you use accordion, and you get the accordion item, accordion header, these are all names for these different pieces. And then you have a button that controls the expanding and collapsing. And then this is your, your div that has the, the body of the information you're showing. So uh, no CSS here. Uh, we have to include two things. We have to include the CSS for Bootstrap and then also use the script to be able to get the JavaScript we want for free. Basically use the accordion. It has some collapsed. If we refresh this page, the first one will show. And if you don't want that, then you set these things to be collapsed. So if we set this to be collapsed for our first item, then it would, I think we have to override one other thing, but you get the idea. So if we wanted to have the first one open, we set it up that way. Otherwise we configure it differently. For Tailwind, uh, I did something very similar. And so you can see we don't get some of the stuff for free. Um, we would have to implement a better JavaScript than what I did. So you can see the, the CSS classes are a little bit longer here to configure the different borders and the background color and some of the other pieces. We could probably eliminate a few of these. I based this off another example that I found online, but we need to have these IDs again, so that we can configure all of our JavaScript. And I know that you could do this better. Um, if you set like a selected item, then I think you could configure it much, much more succinctly. Uh, but the general idea is the same. You have a div, you have some kind of a header, uh, which has your accordion item one, two, or three, and then another div where you're showing and hiding. So this one has to have a class of hidden, Whereas in Bootstrap, we use these, you know, accordion collapse and collapse keywords. So a little different, uh, a few more uh, CSS classes that we have to use there, but similar functionality, just 
need some better JavaScript. So let's do the last example. And these are gonna be our cards. And so for Bootstrap, you probably guessed it, we have a card class and then card body uh, within that. These are what are called stacked cards. So you have an image, some kind of a header and some explanation, and then a, a, a call to action or CTA. These don't go anywhere, but you get the idea of, you know, there's many cards here and you can kind of go wherever you need to. This is very popular. Uh, there's other frameworks like Material UI that use a lot of card layouts. And you can see also some of the default bootstrap theming. So this blue is very noticeable on other websites. Like it's almost like a, blue, a bootstrap blue. And so you can go, you configure that using this button and button primary. Uh, you can also do themes. So you would do button primary or button uh, secondary. This should turn it into like a gray color and configure it differently that way. Let's go into our Tailwind example. So we still have Bootstrap here. Tailwind, you can see a little bit different. Um, so so these this is your default for Bootstrap. Uh, we've customized this a little bit more in our Tailwind implementation. And we have some nice shadows and some really cool little pills here. No button, but we could very well add that if we wanted to. So we have our, our flex box. So we're justifying all of our cards in the center, similar to how we did with Bootstrap. And then in here, again, we have uh, a lot of CSS classes. So this is how you get that nice shadow. This is really a cool thing to do in Tailwind. Getting those shadows, it's it's pretty easy to get that functionality. And then these are our cards. So we don't have like a card keyword. Instead, we have our own CSS uh, talking about, you know, these pills have their own inline block and they're rounded, they have a background. And then this whole piece here is our card. And so it's just rounded, it's got some margin. Uh, we don't wanna do any overflow. It has an image at the top and it's all styled. So we can reuse this, it's just a div. There's nothing special about it. We just add all of our CSS to it. Hopefully that was helpful and you can see some of the differences and do your own comparisons on different components. Uh, again, you know, Bootstrap gives you these things out of the box, but the look and feel is gonna be similar and it's hard to, to customize them to look different than other websites out there that are using Bootstrap. Tailwind is a little bit more in the weeds with CSS, but you can get some really nice components, especially with those cards that we saw. Uh, so. So try it out and let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if there's other content on CSS that y'all would look for. And if you learned anything, then please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.